see there's the sh um, slipper here and the shoe there? That is a greyhound thing. Look at them looking. <laughs> and then all the toys there. They're collectors. They're hoarders, it's called. They love to pick these up and then take them to their little area where they're laying. Do you guys want snackies? It's snacky time, huh? I got snackies for you. Pearl, what do you have here? So this is another collection. If I don't get up early enough in the morning and she gets up before me, she'll have like everything <laughs> that moves in the living room, including a rug, harnesses, toys, slippers, and shoes. Never any damage. Just a collection. Well, even though she never chews on the shoes, she still brings them all into the living room and occasionally she has chewed on the flip-flops, but not very hard. So to try to limit this, as well as keep that whole front area tidy and organized because it's a very small space and I don't want shoes laying all over, I thought I will just go out and find one of those shoe racks and hang it on that little part of the wall right as you come in and I'll get a really nice looking one like leather or something so it matches and it doesn't look junky coming into the RV because that'll be the first thing people will see. So I go around stores looking to try to find one of these like a leather, nice looking faux leather, you know, nice looking something. Didn't find them, they were all mesh. So I'm making my own. First I gotta measure my space so I know what my dimensions are and how much room I've got for pockets on my shoe holder. I used some really thin paper to kind of rough sketch out what I thought a shoe of mine, what space it would need. And I came up with about this, but I'm actually gonna add on one extra inch. I kept, uh, let's see, five eighths of an inch on every side so that it could fold down and have a nice hem or hem directly to the back of the shoe holder. So these are my dimensions and I will provide these on the link in the description. You can download this if you want this. Uh, I'll make up a new copy, not this particular one, if you think that my dimensions are going to be enough for yours. Now following my measurements, I can begin to draw out where my pieces are so I can cut them. And I am cutting up against this wall and measuring up against this so I know that I'm straight. And then uh, drawing longer lines with this guy. Once you get all your pieces cut out, you can begin your hems. Your back piece, you can hem every side, all four sides. Your pockets, you're just going to start by hemming the top, that's all. The others will actually be sewed to the back of this. So now that I got all of my little pockets completed, which took a little bit of time, I'm ready to begin placing these. And I'm only gonna start with the inner edge, so like right here. And I need to make sure I don't place it too low because then my others won't fit, so I have measurements. So I will place my first hem, I'm just gonna lay it upside down and then sew here so that this can fold over and be nice but I need to know that that first hem is six and a half inches because my entire piece is 14 inches and if my pockets are six inches each, that gives me a half inch on each side and one inch in the middle or, uh, you know, you can be adjusted. But when you uh, sew these, it's always never gonna be perfect anyway. So I'm gonna try to get it as exact as possible. So I've got six inches here and I know 
my top pocket has to be almost at the top of my my backboard so now I can begin placing these pins and then once the pins are in place then I can begin to hem it and I am going to do all of my center ones first then I will bring these over and get them straight once you have all of your interior hems done then you can fold the pocket and do the outer hem and keep in mind that you probably want to stick to your measurement because at this point you have leeway to you know make it smaller or bigger if you make it bigger then when you fold it in it's not going to have as much pocketability it'll be more uh, flat than um, you know pockety <laughs> So just stick to that, uh, even though you got a little bit more leeway on this. This one's also going to be harder to sew because you will have to uh, put your hand inside to, to do that. Whereas this one, you know, it was out and easy. We're rounding the last bend and so far, if you're following along, you should have a bunch of holy pockets. So they need to have the bottom sewed together. Now this is the part, if you want it to have that nice pockety uh, fold like on the kind that you can buy from the store, you have to take the bottom part of the pocket and fold it in a little bit so it just folds over itself. And I've got it so that it folds about an inch on each side. Then that can be folded under and stitched. This is the one stitch where the hem isn't going to be on the back side. It will actually be sewed on the front of this because, you know, it would be too difficult having to push this through and sew it from the back. So you fold the edges, then fold the bottom. And to help, you're probably going to want to get a pin and pin that in there so that you get it perfectly folded. Here's what it'll look like afterwards. So I put the hem a little bit up to keep it wanting to fold up there. So you can see it goes down here, then it goes across the front, and then just up a little bit. I also stitched the top corners of each pocket to give them extra durability because if you think of it, this is where the shoe will hang the most on these edges. So once I was finished, I just stitched the top of all the pockets. Something that I found to be really useful, especially on these corners where they're, you know, there's so many layers folded under each other, it's really hard to push the needle through. So I found using my Leatherman helps. And once I get the needle through, I just pull it with the Leatherman. And then it can uh, work the same way to be able to get it to push through. I can use the Leatherman as well to grab onto that and push through and then pull it out the other side. Even doing that, I've still accumulated a bit of a blister on my thumb. I added grommets up top to hang this. I've got my screws in place. Oh, that is so nice. I can't wait to get these out of the way. Anything you can get off the floor in an RV is a good, good plan. <laughs> now the test is to see if Pearl is going to still pick these up and take them into the living room. But otherwise, oh, I love it. 
keep in mind if you download the stencil that I've got that I use for my project that my project was for a very skinny space so I'm using the least amount of pocket possible ideally I kind of wish the pockets were a little bigger so that shoes could slide in and out a little bit faster but because of my small space I didn't want pockets leaning too far out into the walk area. So if you are gonna design yours, design it for as big as pockets as possible. Thank you so much to the supporters on Patreon for contributing to the channel's efforts. If you find any valuable educational information or entertainment value from my videos of this channel, please consider supporting the channel uh, by becoming either a Patreon or shopping the merchandise store on Teespring via the links below. If you have a shirt or any sort of pippening scarf, send me a picture of you wearing it or using it at share at pippenings.com and it might be included in the video. Thanks so much for watching guys and we'll see you next time.